Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. Now, we're in the little tunnel today and first of all, it's all ready to go but I don't need this until next spring. So I'll just wire that out of the way. And then we've got a complete run of all the plants. So, go and get some plants now. Now I believe this is worth showing again and again because it is such a valuable method for getting extra plants. And essentially what these are, are the side shoots off these bigger tomato plants here. They're a the crimson crush variety and I've just planted them. And this is what you get. So I've got plants for free just from a few weeks ago just popping the side shoots that are taken off the plants the mother plants and then I can grow all these extra plants for free and I'm going to put these in the little tunnel now they won't grow to full maturity but they will get on quite well and I will get some fruit off them so it's well worth the messing around to do it because it doesn't take much. All I'm doing is dibbling a hole and chucking the side shoot in and then leaving them because they get watered as they water the normal tomatoes. And now all I've got to do is dig them up and plant them. Really easy. So there's half a dozen tomato plants for free, very quickly. And these are all going to go in the small tunnel. So now I'm just going to get these planted into the ground, dug a little hole, I haven't gone too deep because these are going to grow quick and they're not going to have the length of season to fill a deep hole, I would normally deep plant them but this will be sufficient to get some fruit off and I've just put a little bit of blood fish and bone in the planting hole again not too much because this ground is really rich anyway, it's really good in this tunnel I've worked here for about five or six years now. So I'll go the whole length of this with free tomato plants. Hear my father's voice He would tell me to move on He would say I'll be just fine Yeah He would tell me we have time Time to laugh and time to heal Our favorite song is on repeat Drinking wine until the dawn Okay, I'm planting a melon here and I've grown melons for years but I've never actually grown them where they scramble along the floor. I've always grown them upper structure, supported them, um, just to save space really. But now that I've got space, I want to see how well they do just scrambling. So that's the idea of what I'm going to do here. So I'll just plant this and then I'll explain a little bit more about the plant itself. Now melons are part of the cucurbit family and, and as such they all sort of grow in a similar fashion mostly. So things like your pumpkins and squashes and what have you. So I just need to work out which is the main vine. 
which I think is probably this one here. Right, so what we've got here, I know this plant's looking a bit ropey, it should have been in ages ago. But anyway, this is the main vine coming along here. And it says with melons to cut them off after five leaves, because what you want to do is just stop the growth. I won't cut this yet, I'll leave this for another week or two. Well then you're left with these side shoots. Okay, these have come off the main vine and what, you lend, what you've got is everywhere there's a joint section, a side shoot will grow away from. And essentially this side shoot is a mini me of the main vine. And you can see here, there is another one just starting here. And that's a side shoot off a side shoot. So you've got the main vine, these first side shoots off the main vine are secondaries. And these third ones you call tertiaries. That's just a naming for you, just so you know. But what you want is secondaries only, and you want about four of them. So I've got one, two, three, and once I stop this, another one will grow out from here, and I'll have the four. So you grow them out in an X fashion. So then you've got the four side shoots growing away. Any of the tertiaries to start, any of the side shoots to come off these secondaries, you just rub them out. You don't want those because it'll continually just keep growing and growing and growing. And it could end up with a big mass of foliage there at the expense of poor fruit. And then I think the advice says that you grow four melons on each secondary, on each one of these vines. I only ever grow two, possibly three, uh, because I'm quite far north and the weather's very changeable and can be quite cool. So that's what I do. I grow two, possibly three. But for yourself, if you grow them like this uh, on the four side shoots, if you try and grow three or four and then you end up with all tennis ball sized fruit at the end of the season, you know you try to grow too many. Just reduce the amount of fruit on the next year. It doesn't mean that you can't grow them, it doesn't mean that your soil's no good, it just means that you've tried to grow too many on that one vine. So then just reduce the fruit in the next year. So I will go for two, possibly three on each of these vines and see how the growth is in comparison to the time that's remaining of the season. And if I think they're not all gonna make it, I will, will remove fruit. And I have done it in previous years down to where I've only had two fruit per plant. But if you've got half a dozen plants in the ground, which I used to have, I used to grow quite a few in the big tunnel, um, that soon adds up, you know, a dozen of fruit. You don't really want a lot more than that. So there we go. And also worth mentioning is where these leaf joints are, you will also get roots growing out of every one of these. So if you can lay your side shoots out like this and then over every joint, just drop a little bit of soil. You don't want to cover the vine and completely bury it. You just want to encourage the roots to come out and then that plant then can have more availability to pick up nutrients and pick up moisture from the soil and that will stand your plants in even better stead than it is already because you've done some good pruning. So you don't want to go mad on the covering, just cover it so that the joint is covered like that and as you water it the soil will get washed away, just recover it, just take a minute to, to go back and do it and it'll pay you back dividends. I've seen roots on secondary branches of, of melons and pumpkins grow a good 12 inches deep. Um, so it's well worth doing. So there we go, that's about, that's about it with melons. Just keep them well watered and keep them warm and they sh you should get some fruit by the end of the season. So they just need a, a good watering in now. And I'm gonna soak this whole area with this whole can. As I say, I want to encourage those roots off the secondary vines to get hold of and start working for me.
So just one more note of caution with these type of plants, squashes, pumpkins, melons, the roots are very shallow rooted and they're very fine roots. And within a couple of months, all this area will be covered with the roots, little tiny fine white roots. And if you were to just peel back the soil a little bit, you would find them. So that's a word to the wise, as weeds start to grow and you come in with your trowel and start digging them up, don't. Try and use your fingers to get in the soil to get underneath the weed and pull it out that way, rather than putting the trowel in and just cutting off a ton of roots straight away. Try and pull them when they're small, when you see them. If they get a little bit bigger, try and get them out with your finger. Just go down the actual, slide down, slide down the roots with your fingers and try to pull from down there rather than just putting something in the ground and, and breaking those roots off. So I hope this other end of the bed away from the melons. I'm going to be planting a courgette. You can see the soil is very rich here. So a nice big hole because it's a big plant. There we go. Just put a little watering trough in around it. There we go. And I can romp away there in that whole space. Yeah, uh, all soaking lovely. So what we have here up this bed at the back of the bed is tomatoes. These are all crimson crushed. These were all grown from side shoots that I was taking off the mother plants in the main tunnel anyway. Just shoved them into the ground and they've grown into that. So they're all in, fed, watered, and they will grow up and I will actually train them up these temporary shelving or benches that are now put up out of the way so I can use this place to grow in. Down the other side, I've got a courgette popped in there and just a couple of melon plants. And those melon plants will fill that area all the way up to about here, really. And hopefully I'll get a dozen 16 melons off that. Let's hope anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, but for the rest of this bed, what we've got here now and what I was so excited about the other day is I can use this soil now as a seed bed. Now, if you can imagine short rows going across the bed from that tomato plant over towards me over here. They're rows of about two foot long, which are perfect for, you know, you can get 30, 40 seeds in easily in that. Every four inches all the way up. So all my winter plants now, and any plants that I want, can all go in here. And as they grow, because I'm coming in to feed and water the tomatoes daily, as soon as they're of the right size, I can either take them out, pot them on, or plant them out, or do whatever the heck I want with them, really. But it's just a fantastic opportunity now uh, to use this as a seed bed. And that will be in upcoming videos. So I know it doesn't look much at the minute, but it's full of possibility. Um, and I am incredibly excited about where this is gonna take the whole plot really, because a lot of these plants will go out and feed, feed into the other two tunnels or out into the beds for overwintering or for other things, uh, which is great. It's just limited by my imagination now and I've got great big boxes of seeds at home. So, I'll come down and over the next few days, I'll blast this bed full of seeds. Um, 
I have got some other plants I could pop in here. I've got a sp couple of spare courgettes up there. I don't know what to do with yet. I might fill that empty space, we'll see. But at the minute, this is what I was excited about, getting these plants in that are free and getting more plants sown down there because the seeds are so cheap. And if you're looking for where to get cheap seeds from, I know somebody asked me the other day, I obviously don't mention it enough, but it's Premier Seeds Direct. Just Google them and find their website. And the seeds are like a pound a packet. Some of them might be one pound 20, but then you'll get a reciprocal, much higher amount of seeds. Go and have a look at them. But for this video, that's it. Look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Probably with a bunch of seed packets in my hand. <laughs>